Hello friends and followers, welcome to Doha, Qatar. Behind me, this magnificent scene of Doha skyline. Thank you for joining me on this new video about how does an airplane fly? How does an airplane fly? This is one of the most frequently asked questions that we receive. How is it possible for an airplane to weigh three, four, five hundred tons and simply lift off the ground and fly at a speed of 1,000 kilometers per hour? This is what we will try to find out in this video. Studying this subject isn't possible without knowing its history. So let's go back in time to December 17, 1903. We are in the United States in a small town in North Carolina called Kitty Hawk. Here we meet two brothers, Wilbur and Orville White, two engineers, two inventors who made the first controlled flight on a self-propelled, heavier-than-air machine. The first flight lasted for 12 seconds and traveled 36 meters with Orville in command. We are not going to give too many details about all the flying attempts that took place during history, such as Abbas ibn Farnas, etc nor enter this debate of whom really flew for the first time, but it is more about the first recorded and witnessed controlled sustained flight of a self-propelled airplane. People always assume that the engines are responsible for lifting up the aircraft in the sky. In fact, not at all. The principal element is the wind and the key components are the wings. The wings these enormous aerodynamically shaped surfaces made of carbon fiber composites are extremely resistant and flexible at the same time despite having a large fuel storing capacity in them. Modern wings are designed with the curve on the top surface in order to generate more lift. If you take a closer look at them, you will notice that the wings are formed slightly upward compared to the horizontal axis of the airplane structure. This is called dihedral wing and it is used for commercial airplanes in order to increase stability. To give you an example of a wing's dimension and fuel storing capacity, the Airbus 380's wing is a little longer than 36 meters and can uplift 117 tons of fuel, which is 117,000 kilograms. That's a lot of fuel, but we will talk more in details about the 380 in an upcoming video. Four forces are acting on an airplane, on ground and in the air. The thrust, the drag, the weight and the lift. The thrust, it is a force generated by the engines to move the aircraft through the air. The drag is a force acting opposite of the aircraft motion. On ground, during taxiing and takeoff roll, it is the frictional forces between the aircraft and the ground. But in the air, it is mainly the air resistance to the aircraft's motion. The weight is equal to the total mass of the airplane times the acceleration to the gravity, which is a constant on Earth. Finally, the lift. It is generated by the differential pressure of the airflow from above the wing and beneath it. Lift is a factor of the wing shape itself relative to the angle of attack, to the air density, to the wing area or surface, and to the air speed. Let's take a closer look at the lift equation. So the lift equation. Lift is equal to one half of the lift coefficient times rho, which is the air density, times S, the surface or the wing area, times velocity squared, which is the airspeed squared. Let's see how these terms work together. When we increase the speed, the lift increases as well. And when we increase the wing area, we do increase also the lift, of course, by reaching the necessary uh, speed. Let's take a look at the lift coefficient and see how it is function of the angle of attack. This is the lift coefficient function of the angle of attack or AOA. I guess everybody knows what angle of attack is. It is the angle formed between the cord of the aerofoil and the relative wind vector. So let's check that out. Here, basically what we have, what the graph tells us 
is that the angle of attack increases and with it the lift coefficient increases as well until a certain point right there where it starts to decrease again this point is called CL max so at this point the airflow on the upper side of the wing is detached from the wing itself and something happens called stall and at this CL max the angle of attack that we reached is called alpha crit or critical angle of attack so this is basically the stall point of uh, the wing Bernoulli's principle tells us while the aircraft accelerates the airflow hits the front of the wing and splits into two flows that rejoin at the back of the wing on the upper side of the wing that is curved air particles speeds up as it has a further distance to cover this causes an area of low pressure to build up but on the lower part of the wing air particles slows down as it has a shorter distance to cover this causes an area of high pressure to build up basically the high pressure pushes up the low pressure and the aircraft takes off this is called lift or magic we are not going to enter this debate of who is right and who is wrong between Bernoulli's fluid law and Newton's third law of motion, but we will keep the official argument to explain how lift is generated. In a moving fluid, pressure and velocity are inversely proportional, which means when the pressure is high, velocity is low, and when the pressure is low, velocity is high. Let's take a closer look at Bernoulli's equation. This is Bernoulli's equation regards the fluid flow. Basically, I've drawn uh, here for you a pipe or a tube, and we can imagine that a fluid is going from the entrance here to the exit. Pressure one, so the pressure at position one, velocity at position one, and the height in reference to the ground, for example, at position one, and this is at the entrance. At the exit, we have the pressure at position two, velocity at position two, and the height at position two. That changes clearly compared to position one. So what Bernoulli tells us is that the pressure inside this tube at any point plus rho g h which is the density of the fluid times the acceleration to the gravity times the height at any point inside this tube plus half of the density of the fluid rho again times velocity square or the speed of this flow is equal to n which is a constant Bernoulli is telling us that the result of this equation is always constant. What does that mean? Let's check that out. So imagine the first term here is equal to 5, which is the pressure. The second term, which is rho gh, is also equal to 5. And the third term is equal to 5. The result of this equation will be 15, of course. Now, in this particular case, which is a case very close to a wing shape, we have the dimension that changes. The elevation between the ground and the tube is increasing, as well as the velocity that is decreasing and the pressure that is increasing. When we increase the velocity, we decrease the pressure. So this is exactly what's happening here. We are decreasing the velocity. Let's take it, for example, to 2. So we have to increase either the pressure and the height. Both of them has to increase. Here, definitely, the pressure is going to increase. Let's imagine, for example, to 7. And the height is going to increase, let's imagine, to 6. Now, 7 plus 6, 13, plus 2, 15. This is Bernoulli's equation, the fluid flow law. OK, now, for those of you who like uh, mathematics, I'm going to show you the exact Bernoulli's equation applied to this particular example, or I erased it, but what we have seen just before is actually the general equation. Now, the equation applied to this particular case is pressure at position 1 plus rho, which is the density of the fluid that doesn't change at position 1 and position 2, times the acceleration to the gravity, which is a constant on Earth, doesn't change as well, times the height at position 1, plus half of rho, the same, times velocity square at position 1, is equal to pressure at position 2, plus rho g h height at position 2, plus half of rho v square at position so this is the exact equation so please guys just dig it it is very interesting to this know this is all for this video it was a brief introduction of how airplanes fly of course the subject is way more complicated but it is just for us to understand the basics of aviation if there is any subject you would like me to talk about or if you have any comment please post it in the comment below thank you very much for flying with me see you soon cheers